warm welcome to Gaming News Weekly, your weekly gaming news show every Friday at 5pm with your hosts as always, me, I'm Rich and my good friend and gaming padre, Tabs, say hello Tabs. Elden Ring cooperative buddy. Absolutely. Tabs. Hello Tabs. Uh, Hi Barcodians. The, the Elden Ring enforcer I, I, we should be calling you, is that right? No, I'm magic, mate. I'm support. You're the enforcer, if anything. I don't know about that. Anyway, we'll get on to that shortly. Um, as always, uh, we talk about the, the most interesting news stories this week, uh, which I'll be honest, it's a little bit dry on this week. Um, there's a few bits for us to talk about, and then we've got a bit of everything else. Uh, but we're going to start, as we always do, uh, by talking about what we've been playing this week. Um, and uh, yeah, Tabs, take it away. What have you been playing this week? Bottom ring. Guess it. Yeah, I think we both firmly got the bug of mm. Elden Ring. Absolutely. Pretty much just playing it together. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Rich will fire the odd accusation <laughs> over that I've put in two hours on any <laughs> given morning. <laughs> uh, because one time when we played Monster Hunter together, <laughs> I was actually going through a difficult time. <laughs> but this difficult time has been thrown around as... Uh, apparently an excuse for just playing it because i can't wait i said uh, i said this week that at some point they'll be i'm going through a difficult time and i'll go on and tabs will have done an additional 40 hours <laughs> i mean i'm tempted you know <laughs> the, the how good it is how compelling yeah. it is to play it's just been really cool and we got to play a bit with our friend of the channel bob as well so mm -hmm. we had three player i still feel like I think it's the technical side, isn't it, where I'm critical of the game. Mm. Like everything else, I'm loving to pieces. You know, they've really seems to have created something magical. And I've no doubt that it's going to continue to blossom given all the accounts we've heard. Absolutely. Because what, we're only, oh, what are we in, mate? Like think, 10 hours? Or no, something? I think about, about eight, I think, uh, when we logged off last night, eight. About eight hours. But yeah, the technical side of things, frame rate issues, if you're sensitive to it, which I think I am. I, you can see a lot of mm. stutters throughout the experience. And then oh. the online experience, I kind of feel, or I wish, mate, feel like we're at a stage now where they may have been able to, if they'd been a, had a bit more technical prowess from software, which we know perhaps is in question, they could have just made that a little bit more accessible, a mm. bit more open, a bit more, you know, like we're finding basically that you can't use the horse when you play in multiplayer. Uh -huh. So you're stripped of that. And there's certain other abilities it seems that you're stripped of probably for balancing mm -hmm. more than technical restraint but you fought you you carry on mate I, I know you're desperate to say something and i'll just blab on forever uh, no what i was going to say is i the the frame rate thing i don't find too bad obviously it's there and i know it's happening but i don't find it like over over overwhelmingly detrimental to the experience the pop-up i do have a big problem with like for instance grass mm. just pops up in front of you it's literally right in front of you and it's popping into and I, that really annoys me especially in this day and age i don't mind pop-up stuff that's like so far in the distance you can't see it fair enough there has to be a field of vision on these things but that i think that's a bit poor and like tab says it is a real shame that some of the on so when we were playing online we basically can't use the horse we can't uh, summon any of the things you can summon which i i sort of see what tabs is saying about the um balancing the, you know the balancing but with the horse is that really a balancing thing yeah That's, i don't think that is i mm, think it's the speed of the horse maybe and i don't know what it is but i, I feel i feel like that's more technically so based, so isn't it? Playing it together, what we're tending to, to have is a lot of backwards and forwards. So one goes into one person's world, then we might get to somewhere, but then you've got to go out of the world for that person to unlock that area, for then the person to come back in, which happens quite quickly. It just ends up being a little bit faffy, which is a little bit shame. That's where I think Tab says it could be a little bit better streamlined and then make it more compelling online. Uh, but I realise the online bit is really as a help, you know, we're sort of playing it as a co-op and it wasn't really designed for that necessarily. Um, yeah. But we are loving it. I, it's, I think we played about an hour or so, or maybe maybe two hours on the first on the first day. And it, it, we both said it, it was like playing Demon Souls in an open world, it was fantastic. And I think they've done a, a really good job and it makes you want to continue playing it. So it doesn't surprise me, you know, with people saying that it is fantastic. And I would say we have done no, none of the story really. 
I think we we hit the first sort of story beat. I think it might have been last yes, night. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, but we we were sort of stuck and we were like, oh, we're sort of almost to the point where we can move through this story beat. Um, but I think we need to level up a little bit. So yeah, absolutely loving it. I can understand why it's been so highly praised and, and we're very early game. Prove us on, mate. Story number two. Absolutely. Well, not story number, story number one. Story number two? Oh, I'm wishing it away. It was like a whole story, wasn't it, about Elden Ring? <laughs> I know. I mean, story number one. one. We, we could talk about it all night, couldn't we? But anyway, story number one. So, we're straight into State of Play recap. So, this week there was a State of Play. It was last night, I think about 10 o'clock. Oh, last night as in Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, sorry. We filmed this on a Thursday. Uh, about 10 o'clock uh, UK time. Uh, uh, some things in there. I wouldn't say there was anything particularly like outstanding. Tabs is putting the thumbs down. Um, but yeah, interesting. There, there was a couple of bits in there. But uh, I don't know whether Tabs wants to jump in whenever he wants on this one. But I'll uh, I'll uh, go through it. And this is what PlayStation Blog uh, sort of listed out. So futuristic exosuits clash with dinosaur hordes in Exo Primal out in 2023. I thought that looked okay. I thought it looked like. Uh, a sort of a play for an online multiplayer if I've ever seen one. Um, I think it was Capcom, wasn't it? I mean, mm. yeah, it looked interesting, mm. but it also looked a bit, I don't know, doesn't feel AAA, does it? No. Uh, there was new Ghost Wire Tokyo trailer showcasing ghostly threats out on PS5 March the 25th. I thought this looked good, actually. I thought this looked decent. How? Yeah, technically, really pretty, mm. and the mechanics look cool and mm. stylish so mm. if, as long as they can give it some substance beyond that i think they could be on to a winner mm. absolutely i thought i did think that looked good i'll be interested to see reviews on that one um new stranger of paradise final fantasy origin demo as you carry over progress to the full game that looked interesting um i've not had a look at this um so it'll be interesting to see how you know how people think about that it does look interesting um what, what did you make of that one tabs yeah, it looked okay. I think it was quite pretty, wasn't it? Mm. And yeah, I, you know, I was almost forgiven for thinking for a minute, is this like a mainline entry? Because mm. um, it looked pretty good. But apart from that, yeah, I was pretty lukewarm on it, if Agreed. I'm honest. Agreed. And I think and then, that, Go on. Go on. I was no, just going to well, say... Worlds Collide in for Spoken is mm. next, as Frey explores a land filled with corrupted creatures. I think for me and you, wasn't it? This was the standout. Absolutely. Um, it looks really gorgeous. Mm. The, the, and the amount of effects going on at any one time was something that stuck out to me. And we know it's got a delay until later in the year. So nice that we had a, a new trailer to look at, pour over and... Yeah, still hopeful on this one. Hopefully this this delay is really going to give them time to polish it up and make it something mm. really special. I have, to, I have to say that I think the character models, environments, everything that's going on, the way you fight the creature, I think this looks fantastic. I think this looks like this could be on to a winner. Again, it'll be interesting to see how well it's received. Um, and obviously we'll find out a bit more when we see gameplay and stuff. But yeah, I'm really liking the looks of this one. Um, next up, uh, Gundam uh, Evolution brings free-to-play FPS action onto PS5 and PS4 in 2022. I mean, this just looked like cannon fodder to me. I mean... I just think it was also like, because they're obviously going for this M FPS vibe, but like, I don't know, FPSs work better in other sorts of games, not like robot mech games. I don't mm. know, maybe that maybe that's wrong. Maybe, maybe they can work in those kinds of games, but... It just didn't have the right feel, you know, mm. just looking at it. I just yeah. thought this seems a bit plain and a bit unremarkable. Mm. Next one, the missus was really like looking like in the looks of. This is like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Cowbunga collection. And it's like a collection of all the old games. You've got side scrollers in there. Actually looks really cool. It'll be interesting to see how well it plays. But I think there was a lot of nostalgia there for the missus. I think she was like... I think it, it was there. Konami as well, mate. Mm. So an army came out the shadows. Yeah, I know, yeah. I thought that when I saw that at the end. What's up next, mate? Gigabash brings multiplayer monsters and mayhem to PS5 and PS4 this year. I can't even remember it. No, agreed. <laughs> uh, this next one, I thought the visual style was striking, at the very least. I thought the visual style was odd. I, I tried, we were trying to discuss what we thought it was. It's like a, almost like a new style, I would say. Like... It's like a mixture between sort of cell shaded and 
Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird style, isn't it? But it was called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure mm. All-Star Battle R launches this fall. I mean, you start to look here, you kind of feel like there's... It's sort of like cash grab territory, isn't it? Mm. We've got a free-to-play FPS. I mean, presumably that's a battle royale. Um, what did we have earlier on? You know, that futuristic exosuits, exoprimal. Mm. That looks a bit like it could be, you know, almost one of these kind of games as a service type games that mm. they want to monetize and, and get money that way. So, yeah, all that doesn't sit well with me anyway, but carry us on, mate. What, what yeah, so we next up was uh, Battle Through Hell and back in Trek to Yomi. I thought this looked interesting. This almost looked a bit like a Wes Anderson stop motion, I thought. I was really was interested. Was this the one that looked like a 2D Ghost of Tsushima? Yes, yes, it was. Yeah. But the, the animation of it, I thought, was really interesting. But again, I don't know, it looked interesting. I think that was the thing on this state of play. There was a lot of like things that you weren't that interested in. It just left a bit flat. Um, I did like this though. Returnal uh, Ascension update is going to add co-op and then an additional, I think, DLC, which Survival is survival mode. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really cool. I think co-op on that game would be really cool. Um, that so is cool, and it's nice that it opens that door up to a lot of new experiences now. Because even for me and you, mate, I mean, it's something in a quiet period at some point mm. if we ever get one again. <laughs> we could decide, you know, pick that up cheap, play it together co-op, because we know it's notoriously hard as well. Mm. And that's always a barrier for entry. But if you play it with a buddy, you well, know. It, uh, that, that's exactly why we we chose previously to play Demon Souls together. And obviously we're choosing to play Elden Ring together because standalone, those games are really hard and can be quite demoralizing. But somehow played together like we do it sort of changes the experience and the same would be for that you know really hard game but you're going through it together you're feeding off each other and obviously there's two of you to, to do the battles so yeah i think that will change that uh, and i think that's really cool that they've added that uh the deer field chronicle announced for ps5 and ps4 <coughs> excuse me and then valkyrie elysium descends onto ps4 <laughs> in 2022 yeah so I think it, for me, mate, it just, I mean, they did try and set the scene. I suppose they, they dropped it. We, you know, we only knew about this the day before, was it? Something mm. like that. Yeah. And then they did say that it's going to focus on games, I think, in the latter half of 2022 mm. and on Japanese uh, developers. Yeah. So I suppose mm. you can kind of say they tried to set expectations there. You know, we weren't expecting to see God of War drop because of that. But I don't know. It just... I think this is more a symptom of like the, the formula of marketing we're in now because we don't have E3 seemingly anymore. Mm. We don't have that kind of massive drop condensed uh, window of game reveals mm. and instead we get it drip fed throughout the year. And th therefore, you kind of never know what you're going to get from these things. There's no doubt, I'm, I'm sure there's an element of this, you know, Sony have had deals with all these third party developers. To they've got to put something out to promo it. So. It almost feels like this, though, could have been dropped easily on just on the PlayStation blog mm. or on a Twitter, you know, um, a Twitter post. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it was hard to come away from not feeling a little bit disappointed uh, unless you've got a specific interest in some of these sorts of games that, that are down mm. there. And I think for me as well, there's also kind of like when you hear Japanese studios even though it really I should probably check myself, I think about Konami. You yeah, know, I think I think about Japan Studio, even though I think they're gone now, are they? I forget. Mm. Um, who else? You know, Resident Evil. So you almost imagine I'm going to see Resident Evil, or yeah, yeah. could I see could I see Silent Hill? You know, I think. Could, I, yeah, I think, I think that's the thing, isn't it? When you hear that, you hold that in such high esteem that you're expecting something like magical. And yet this just felt very one-dimensional flat for me. Agreed, mate. Agreed. Anyway. And that's pr probably enough on that one, Agreed. Is it? Do you want to move us on, buddy? So we've got a bit of a different one for story number two, Review Roundup. And the reason is there's nothing massive out, but there's a few games or game slash expansions that we mm. thought would be, you know, there might be a bit of an audience out there for to know what, uh, what the critics are saying. So anyway... Three games we're going to cover, slash expansions. I'll start with the first, Rich, you follow up. So, Triangle Strategy. So, we know this is for the Nintendo Switch. Currently sitting at an 82 on Metacritic. 
And then I basically tried to match the uh, a, a review that I found that's roughly on that score, that average score. So Game Informer gave it an 83 and they had this to say, Playing Triangle Strategies Battles is probably the easiest and most carefree part of the experience. There's a lot of fun in strategizing and watching your character's abilities shine, and I love outsmarting the competition. The hardest part of the journey is the choices alongside the bleak realities it makes you confront about injustices of the world. The game has multiple endings, letting you pick your vision for the future. Even with my ending, which was one for a more idealized, compassionate world, I was left a little disheartened. But maybe that's the point. And for that, Triangle Strategy isn't like most games you'll play, What, uh, which is what makes it special, even if it's not always perfect in the delivery of its harsh truths. Mm. Interesting. I like the fact that it's obviously got a much deeper story. I mean, it's, it's sort of um, mm. a turn-based strategy game, you would say? Yeah, turn-based mm. strategy. I think in that kind of Final Fantasy tactics mold. Mm. That's what I think. Um, but you're absolutely right. I've heard people say you can really affect the story as well with decisions mm. and choices throughout, and that's kind of cool. Decent. So next up, uh, Destiny 2 Witch Queen, which I believe is a DLC, isn't it, Tabs? Yes, it is. Yeah, is it? Destiny's like an online forever game, isn't it? Yeah. It's game as a service. This is the, the big expansion, the new big expansion. Mm. Uh, it currently sits at 88 on Metacritic, and the gamer had this to say. Uh, the gamer gave it a 90 and had this to say. The Witch Queen is nowhere near over. We still have the raid next weekend, and if Beyond Light is any indication, a lot more to discover once the first team crosses the finish line. It's difficult to judge a Destiny expansion this early on, but based on the campaign, al campaign alone, I feel confident in saying that this is the best piece of Destiny content Bungie has ever put out. Wow. If this is the new standard for expansions, the future of Destiny 2 is extraordinarily bright and dark. Well, that hurts well for yeah. Sony, doesn't it? I mean, Considering they've just bought Bungie. Yeah, yeah, really good, um, really good praise, really good praise. I do wish, mate, you could cope with FPSs because I think we'd have a, <laughs> we'd have a lot of fun on Destiny. Mm. It's got all, it's got the progression stuff. Raids are just so cool. But anyway. We've got Elden Ring. Um, so to wrap us up on this review roundup, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Dawn of Ragnarok. So 74 on Metacritic and worth playing. Never heard of them before, but they <laughs> gave it a 75. And they uh, had this to say. At the end of the day, they were probably not heard of us, mate, either, have they? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Dawn of Ragnarok is a nice, but not particularly special expansion pack. The plot is fun enough, uh, the plot is a fun enough visit into North mythology, but unfortunately that's such a well-trodden area that it feels less special to dive into. The new powers are a cool twist on the formula, but ultimately you're still playing more Valhalla. <coughs> if you enjoyed the game, then you'll enjoy the expansion, but if you burned out on it, then being able to turn into a bird isn't going to refresh your Viking spirit. <laughs> a little bit savage, that review, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, agree. Oh, the trouble with this is, I look at that and think, oh, it's Dawn of Ragnarok. Oh, it's God of War. And then I'm like, mm, yeah. it's not it's not God of War, is it? No. I, and I just think uh, some of that trailer we saw about it, a lot of the design aesthetics seem to just be totally derivative mm. of what we saw in the last God of War. Yeah. Down to, I remember there was like these blue characters that reminded me of, um, you know, what's his name? Sindri and, oh, oh I forget yeah. the other, you yeah. know, the brothers. Yeah, yeah. They looked a bit like that. And I, I just thought, Oh, well, that that's a bit like Ubisoft all over at times, isn't it? Mm. I don't I don't blame the devs. I'm sure they've got loads of talented developers. I, I feel like it's probably more management mm. that are just constantly encouraging them to to chase trends, be derivative, and uh, anyway, let's uh, let's push that to one side, mate, and finish up, wrap things off, uh, wrap things up for the week with uh, story number three. Excellent. So story number three which I feel like I've been sold down the river on this one, but we'll, we'll get into it. Uh, Moomins joins the Open World Club, uh, and Rock Paper Shogun had this to say. A new video game will visit Tove J Janssens? Yeah, I think that sounds yeah. right. Uh, wonderful world of Moomins, and I am delighted. Due to launch next year, Snufkin Melody of Moomin Valley will star the tootling nomad as he returns from his winter away only to find the park keeper has imposed upon uh, opposed order upon the free-spirited valley by building parks everywhere. 
Sounds like a problem to be solved using friendship and mischief. It's quite pretty too. In this particular game, Snuffkin will be exploring an open world, solving musical and environmental puzzles, doing side quests, and the blurb says, ultimately chasing out the park keeper and his parks. With the help of your trusty harmonica, a bit of stealth, and the friends you'll meet along the way. Snuffkin, Melody of Moomin Valley, is due to hit Steam in 2023. <laughs> and we're all super excited for it, aren't we, Tabs? Yeah, a bit of a joke story, because obviously it's a dry news week, but it just stuck out at me. I mean, you read that bit at the end, mate, it could be Zelda. Where, where does it say? So, open world, solving musical and environmental puzzles, doing side quests. I mean, that's that's like a Zelda game. So, but, it's, like, um, it's like Ocarina of Time does Moomin. Exactly. But, I, you know, I think that it does actually look fairly pretty. Okay. Um, but I also just thought it was funny, you know, given we're on the back of this, like, slew of AAA games mm. and hype <clears> experiences, and then we've got, you know, Moomin Open World game coming. But, um, no, we shouldn't cast judgment, You never know. This might be like the next 97 on Metacritic. So. <laughs> uh, anyway, that is enough of that. Let's do everything else and bring this one to a close. So I'll get going. Elden Ring is larger and more complex than originally planned, which is very interesting. Indeed. Gamescom will host an in-person event in August for the first time in three years. Which is wow. fantastic. I feel like that means the world is moving in the right direction in terms of you know getting everybody together again. And uh, finally this week, Bungie is working on a new third-person action game, which is very exciting indeed. You, you've cut that last story off then, mate. You don't want to cover that. Is it that bad? What? You said finally. That's the last thing, isn't it? No, I've got it. Jurassic World Evolution Studio announces new F1 management sim coming this summer. Yeah, that's not on my script sheet, so I don't know where <laughs> that's gone. <laughs> but yeah, so right, I think it's interesting. Yeah, I, I actually really thought this looks really interesting. It looks like they're they they kind of take it to another another level. And I've played a couple of manage, Formula One management sims over the years and really enjoyed the more technical aspect that you can get into them. So yeah, really interesting on those. Cool. Right, Fantastic. so that is everything we've got for you this week. We hope hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, as always, give us a like. And uh, if you're new here and you've enjoyed what you've uh, you've seen today, uh, subscribe to the channel and join us. But I think that's it. Another one for the archive. Dampton completed. <laughs>